Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to recover cell phone footage that was shot up and down. So once you have this footage that's shot up and down, you can't recover it fully. You can't like create pixels on the left and right. It's just not possible. But what you can do is add this neat little background to it, which you can see right here. It's just a blur on the left and right and it reacts in here because it's exactly synced up. So that's what we're gonna be creating today. Let's get started with that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and create ourselves a new sequence. So you don't wanna just drag your footage in because if you drag your footage in, it's going to create a sequence that's like this right here where it's just up and down box. And then you're gonna end up with the exact same problem when it trying to view it on 16 by nine, it's just gonna be a box. So what we need to do is we need to go up to sequence, sequence settings, or my bad. We need to file, new, and then sequence. And then we're gonna be presented with this. And we need to create something in the 16 by nine aspect ratio. Try to get it as close to whatever your frames per second your um, phone recorded on. Once you throw your footage into Premiere Pro, it'll tell you right here under frame rate. Mine is at 30.4, so I'm gonna go with as close to 30 as possible. I'm going to take just this preset right here, which is 1920 um, video. Then you can just go into sequence settings to change anything around in here if you wanna do something like that. But this is fine for me. All I want is a 1920 by 1080p sequence that I can work with. Then I'm gonna take my video, which is right here, and I'm going to drag it in. And then I'm going to say keep existing sequence settings right here. Uh, I don't wanna change them, I wanna keep them so that it comes in like this. Also, if you want to have this sort of list view over here, I just move this down here. You can see if you make it go up, if you click the box right here, it makes them into these boxes. But if you want details, just click the details and you can see things like frame rate. Anyway, we have our footage right here, and as you can see, it's zoomed in. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on this, we wanna go up into the top left to effect controls, and we wanna drop this scale down just so it fits perfectly. So that works great, it covers the entire screen and I get all of what I was recording in here which is about 57 for me. I could probably go down one, yeah 57 actually looks perfect for what I am doing right here. So then now we have this black bar on the left and right. So what we wanna do is we want to take this right here and we want to duplicate it somehow. You can just drag in another one if you want or you can just click on this, hit Control C and then undo this selector and make sure it's on video two, hit Control V and now we've duplicated the footage onto the top up here. And so it's exactly the same again. So now what we wanna do is we want to right click on the bottom one. So this is going to be, the top one is now going to be the thing on the top of our video. And then the bottom one down here is going to be our blurry background. And the, the reason we're doing it this way is because the top is going to have priority. So if we scale the top up really big, you won't be able to see the bottom. So we're gonna to go to the bottom right here and we are going to scale it up to really large just to fit the edges right here. So now we have that that sort of, you know, the effect starting to happen, but we need to reduce how distracting it is right now because if we see right now, um, I'm just gonna unlink the audio so we don't have to keep listening to that. Uh, right now, if I go up, it's very, very distracting. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a blur and we wanna reduce how distracting it is. So we're gonna go into effects. We're gonna go into brightness. So just search brightness right here and it is under color correction, brightness and contrast, we're going to drop that onto our back image, the bottom one right here. And then we're going to just drop its brightness down. And yeah, not touch the contrast. Brightness is all we really need here. So we're gonna drop it down just to make this stand out more, make this the brightest sort of point in the video. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into blur and we're going to use whatever blur we feel like works however i think that the camera blur is going to work the best here because it makes it look like it's out of focus which is kind of what we're going for here we're trying to like almost imitate a camera as it might focus on the center image and not focus on the back image gives a cool illusion to it so we're going to drop this down and you'll see that the blur happens it's going to start at 25 and i think just a couple ticks lower than that maybe 22 21 is a good one to go for you don't want it really clear because then it's just as distracting and then it's sort of blurry and it just I don't know, I don't think it looks that good here. However, it might work with whatever footage you're going with. I personally like to bring it up to about 21, 22 right here. And then now we have like a really strong blur on the outside. So now when you watch this video back, this is what you focus on and the side images kind of go with it because it has the same movement and it focuses your, your eyes into the center onto your cell phone um, footage. That is it on this tutorial. That's basically how to create this nice little blurry background. Remember, it's really, really simple. All you gotta do is just take the top, uh, duplicate your footage, make the back one scaled up, lower the brightness, and then blur it up. 
Thanks everyone for joining me. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions, comments, or suggestions for future tutorials, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'd love to respond to them and make tutorials. This was actually inspired off of a comment stream. Um, I was talking to some guy, and this is just something that came to mind as I was talking with him. So yeah, I, I like to read your comments, and I like to sort of make stuff that you guys want to see. Anyway, until next time, guys, see ya.